Some next-generation graphics cards that were originally planned for launch in 2024 have been cancelled. In this video, I aim to answer four key questions. Which GPUs have been cancelled? Why they were cancelled? Which products are still on track for release? And what does this mean for the next generation of NVIDIA, AMD and Intel graphics cards next year and beyond? But first… CDKeyOffer.com is my number one choice for when I need to buy a cheap Microsoft software key. They are a reliable provider of affordable keys to me, my friends and the channel community for over two years now, so highly recommend it. Use my discount code IVADIM to get 30% off an already amazing price and grab yourself a Windows 10 Pro for $16, Windows 11 Pro for $23 or Office 2021 for just $52. You can use PayPal for fast and secure payment and get your key instantly. Links to all these products are in the description below. First up, which GPUs have been cancelled? Unfortunately, AMD had to cancel two of its most powerful next-gen RDNA 4 GPU designs. Those are Navi 41 and Navi 42 that were supposed to power the RX 8900 series and RX 8800 series graphics cards in the second half of next year. This means that currently NVIDIA is the only GPU maker planning to launch a complete next-generation graphics card lineup, offering options from expensive high-end to affordable mid-range choices. To the best of my knowledge, Intel will not be challenging NVIDIA's high-end GPUs in 2024 and 2025, but they do have some mid-range graphics cards planned, powered by Battlemage architecture. Designing GPUs is a challenging task. Even industry veterans like AMD can't always keep up, so it's no wonder that it takes Intel a considerable amount of time to catch up. And I hope they will. Having a third major player in the GPU industry is undoubtedly a good thing. Increased competition leads to better products and more competitive prices, which the market is in great need of right now. The big question is what happened? Why did AMD have to cancel its most powerful GPU designs? To answer this question, first we must understand how complex are these next-gen RDNA 4 GPUs. AMD began using chiplets in GPUs starting with the current RX 7000 series graphics cards. You can see multiple chips packaged together in the Navi 31 GPU which powers the RX 7900 XT and XTX graphics cards. This elaborate design caused AMD engineers a lot of headaches and has been eventually launched in a less than optimal state, failing to deliver the performance they aimed for. AMD attempted to fix what they could with driver updates. This led to the neglect of RX 6000 series driver updates for several months, as the company prioritized addressing the performance issues of the newly released RX 7900 XT and XTX graphics cards. In the end, the Navi 31 GPU still doesn't perform as well as AMD initially had hoped. Recently, Hardware Unboxed tested how much better the RX 7900 XT performance got after 9 months of driver updates. They found that it got about 3% faster on average across 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolutions. Some games, like The Last of Us Part 1, did receive a noteworthy uplift. However, achieving an additional 11% performance at 1440p and 8% at 4K is not exactly a jaw-dropping result after 9 months of working on the fix. Going all-in on an elaborate GPU design is risky. That is why Nvidia still utilizes monolithic chips for all of its GPUs. This is where the next generation Navi 41 and 42 GPUs based on RDNA 4 come in. Their design is even more complex than the Navi 31. Here is a 3D render made by Crapper 9000 that is based on a diagram made by Allrack 29. Do note that these are merely conceptual images and may or may not accurately represent the final product, but they perfectly illustrate just how elaborate the high-end RDNA 4 GPU design is. Note how many chiplets are packaged together. I see 10 chiplets not counting the interconnect structure. Moore's Law is Dead shared another RDNA 4 diagram that corroborates the renders I've shown you just now. Additionally, Moore's Law is Dead has managed to obtain some statements from anonymous AMD sources involved in the RDNA 4 development. According to them, RDNA 4 architecture focuses on improving ray tracing, geometry, which basically means rendering all objects and surfaces in the game, and lastly, efficiency. 
Due to its complexity, Navi 41 has had a lot of random issues continue to pop up, while RDNA 5 development is progressing smoothly with exciting early performance projections. There is a small chance that the Navi 41 project will be reactivated later if the small team left working on it has a last-minute breakthrough. However, it makes perfect sense to drop problematic projects and focus on the good ones. RDNA 4 is targeting quarter 3 2024 for launch, very late summer 2024 at the earliest. Cancelling the Navi 41 and 42 allows AMD to redeploy engineers to work on other forthcoming RDNA 3.5 and RDNA 4 projects that are progressing smoothly and are a guaranteed success. AMD has plenty of such high-priority products to launch in 2024. I am talking about multiple APUs for laptop, as well as the next-generation consoles such as the rumored PS5 Pro, and a Mi400 professional GPU for the AI market, which is at the absolute top of the priority list because AI is where the money is right now. If you have any doubts about whether these companies are willing to sacrifice the gaming segment to maximize their profits, then take a look at NVIDIA's latest earnings report, published on August 23rd. NVIDIA reported record-breaking earnings, with a staggering 171% increase in revenue for the data center segment, driven by the sales of AI GPUs and AI platforms, primarily including Hopper H100, Ampere A100 and HGX systems. You'd be mad to believe that AMD doesn't want to get in on this action as soon as possible. Additionally, AMD can use a part of the freed up resources to boost the next next generation RDNA 5 development. This may enable AMD to potentially deliver a significant blow to Nvidia a few years down the line by launching a much stronger GPU product line sooner. It won't be the first time AMD employed this strategy. Four years ago, AMD cancelled the most powerful RDNA 1 GPU designs and focused on the smaller, mainstream GPUs in the RX 5000 series. The generation ended up being a success, thanks to the well-positioned RX 5700 XT card for 1440p and the RX 5600 XT card for 1080p gamers. Thanks to not launching high-end RX 5000 series graphics cards, AMD managed to save money and resources which enabled it to deliver the RX 6000 series, which properly challenged Nvidia in the high-end category. The RX 6900 XT managed to outperform Nvidia's flagship at the time, the RTX 3090, at 1080p and 1440p resolutions. Also, it competed well at 4K resolution, forcing NVIDIA to release the RTX 3090 Ti to properly reclaim the performance crown. I'm just saying that in the long run it appears that AMD is making the right call here. If the development of the top RDNA 4 GPUs is falling behind schedule, cancelling them and reallocating resources to work on the more promising projects is the logical choice. Why waste resources, time and money when you can focus on delivering products that matter most to the majority of your customers, while maximizing your profits? Furthermore, AMD can leverage the experience gained from working on the intricate Navi 41 chiplet design and apply it to development of future GPU architectures. Chiplets are poised to become indispensable in the future, as upcoming manufacturing tools won't be able to produce chips as large as current ones. To remain competitive in the years to come, chip makers will be forced to embrace some form of chiplet technology. Another aspect to consider is that the Navi 41-based graphics card would likely come with a significantly higher price tag compared to AMD's current flagship, the RX 7900 XTX, which is priced at close to $1,000. I believe the market may not be ready for such a shift in pricing just yet. Let's move on to the next question. Which products are still on track for release? The smaller, simpler monolithic Navi 43 and 44 GPU designs are progressing smoothly and expected to launch on schedule. It has been proposed to equip Navi 43 with 64 compute units and Navi 44 with 32 compute units. These GPUs should provide big enough performance uplift to launch upper mid-range to lower mid-range graphics cards. If this holds true, I suspect we may witness the Navi 43-powered RX 8700 XT equipped with 16GB of memory at the top of the RX 8000 series lineup, targeting a 1440p resolution with a price tag between $500 and $600. Ideally, in terms of performance, the RX 8700 XT needs to handle the latest AAA games at 60 plus FPS using an ultra-quality preset. 
Competitive games should run at 120 plus FPS on Ultra and 240 plus FPS on Low. This way it would cater to both types of gamers. Such an upgrade would be appealing to those who currently own an RX 5700 XT, RX 6700 XT, RTX 2070 or RTX 3070 graphics card. Similarly, if Navi 44 indeed features 32 computer units, I expect it to be featured in the RX 8600 XT, targeting 1080p resolution with a price range of $300 to $350 and 12GB of memory. In terms of performance, the RX 8600 XT should be capable of running the latest AAA games at 60 plus FPS at 1080p using ultra quality preset. Competitive games should be able to comfortably achieve 120 plus FPS on ultra and 200 plus FPS on low. This type of GPU would be an attractive upgrade for those who currently own an RX 5600 XT, RX 6600 XT, RTX 2060, RTX 3060 or a similar graphics card. Theoretically, AMD can achieve this, and I believe it's their plan. In addition to architectural improvements, more performance can be unlocked by utilizing faster GDDR7 memory and employing a more advanced TSMC 4 nanometer or 3 nanometer process for chip manufacturing. If all of the above conditions are met, I expect the Navi 44 based RX 8600 XT to roughly match the RTX 3070 performance on average in the worst case scenario and be slightly faster than the RX 6800 in the best case scenario. The same applies to the RX 8700 XT based on Navi 43. It has to match the RTX 4070 Ti level of performance in the worst case scenario and perform as well as the RX 7900 XT in the best case scenario if AMD wants these next generation graphics cards to justify their launch. Additionally, Navi 43 and 44 look like perfect GPUs for high-end to mid-range laptops. So, even without high-end desktop RX 8000 series graphics cards, AMD will be able to serve all of its most important clients and segments. This answers what the cancellation of these GPUs means for the forthcoming generation of AMD graphics cards. Now let's take a look at how Nvidia may respond. Unfortunately, this is disappointing news for those of you eagerly awaiting Nvidia's high-end graphics cards, like the RTX 5090 and 5080. To illustrate how Nvidia behaves when its products face little competition, consider the current RTX 40 series cards. The RTX 4090 utilizes the AD102 die with 11% of its cores disabled, whereas the RTX 3090 had only 2.4% of its total cores disabled. Moreover, Nvidia attempted to launch the already overpriced $800 RTX 4070Ti under the name RTX 4080 12GB, attempting to charge a staggering $900 for it. Hence, you can expect more of the same when it comes time to launch the RTX 50 series. It is highly likely that Nvidia will downgrade its high-end GPU configurations and charge the same or even higher prices. On a positive note, I expect competitively priced options in the mainstream class of GPUs because there will be a plethora of competing products from Nvidia, AMD as well as Intel in this category. What do you think about all this? Let's have a chat in the comments below. Check out these two videos next if you want to learn more about the forthcoming RTX 5090 graphics card, subscribe for more content like this if you haven't already and reward this video with a like if you enjoyed it. It helps me a lot to grow the channel. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.